Let's look at how to use IntelliJ IDEA shortcuts for run and debug. So I have this class file here with the main function. To run this, I can press Alt Shift F10. When I press that, it will give me a list of all the classes that I've run before and this current class. So the current class, there is a number on the left side which is 1. So if I press 1 or if I press Enter, it will run that particular class. So this main class was run and the output was printed on this run window which is at the bottom 2. Press shift escape to go back to the editor and now since I have run this class file before I can directly run it again using shift F10. If I do that it ran it again and it gave the output. So alt shift F10 is to show you the options and you can run any of the files and if you already have run the file the previous time you can directly rerun it using shift F10. You can do a similar thing for debug also. So if I press Alt Shift F9, it will again give me the list of classes that I want to debug. So since the number on the left hand side is 1, I can press 1 or select and press enter and it will debug that particular class file. So it started the debug mode, it completed the class execution and it gave the output. And since I have run this class before, I can run it again using Shift F9 directly. Now during debug, it did not stop anywhere because we do not have any breakpoints. So if we want to put breakpoints, we'll use Control F8. You can again press Control F8 and it will just toggle the breakpoint. So if I press Shift F9, it will start the class in the debug mode and you'll immediately see that the class execution stopped or paused at this particular point. Now if I want to continue or step over this point, I'll just press F9. And since there are no debug points after this, the class execution was completed. So let's do that again. Shift F9. I run it. I'm in the particular debug point. If I want to go inside a particular method, the shortcut for that is F7. If I want to go line by line for each of these statements, shortcut for that is F8. So if I press F8, it'll keep going to the next line. Now even during the execution, you can press a debug, you can set a debug point, say control F8 here. And now if I press F9, it'll come directly to the next debug point. So just to summarize, F8 is to go to the next statements, F9 is to go to the next debug point or finish the execution if there is no debug point, and F7 is to go within the method. We're using this run and debug on this class, which has a very small execution time. Sometimes, of course, in their real life projects, they're very large, they take time to start, and sometimes you want to restart the server. So let's say I run this class again, Shift F9, and during the execution at the midpoint, I want to restart the server. And the shortcut for that is Control F5, and which is also visible here if you hover over this. So if you press Control F5, it'll restart that particular server. Sometimes, if you're if you're deploying on Tomcats, and if your restart doesn't work, it takes a lot of time to kill the particular Tomcat. The shortcut to kill it forcefully is Control F2. I cannot show it here because I do not have a Tomcat running. Also, during your coding, if you have made any changes, you have within debug and you have made some changes, say new counter is equal to zero, control shift, enter. Now, if you want to update your new code, which is hot swap the code, the shortcut for that is control F9. So when you do that, it will rebuild the class. It will say some classes have been reloaded. Do you want to reload it? If you say yes. And this is especially useful if you have a large project which is running on say Spring Boot or any framework which allows you to do a hot swap of your classes. When you are executing a particular class in a debug session, you can also evaluate a particular variable or an expression. So let's go within this method. I'll do F8 and I'll keep moving right and I want to check what the value of count is. If I move my cursor here and I say alt f8 it will evaluate that particular expression. So in this case my expression is only 
count so it gave me the value of count i can do an entire expression here so i can say count plus uh, new counter give me the value of that so since new counter is zero it gave me the value of one if you have uh, say board right board is a particular array two, two dimensional array so you can also call its methods so let's say i want to know its length i'll press enter it'll give the length of three so this evaluate expression becomes quite handy when you're going through a dework session so that's it for this video all the shortcuts that we went through i'll add them in the description below thanks for watching